YouTubers, Code Lady here. The following video that you're about to watch is from my full-length course called Learn iOS 9 App Development with Xcode 7 and Swift 2. It's available on Udemy and is currently retailing for $79. However, I am now offering a 35% off coupon for any YouTube viewers. So get them while they're hot because supplies are limited. Enjoy the lecture and the link to the coupon is in the description below. Let's begin by opening up a new project. It's going to be a single boot application. Click next. I'm going to call this, let's call it users and pass. Users and passes. That's fine. And unlike before, this time we are going to check off the use core data box. Okay. Click next. Save it to your usual location. And now we're ready to go. I want to bring your attention over here. Here is a line that we have never seen before. It's the XC data. This looks like model with a D at the end. Here's this line. Here's where you're going to create your entity or a database if you're used to working in that term, but it's called an entity in Swift. And also our app delegate has a little bit more information than we've seen in the past. And it has to do with our NS managed objects and things like that, which is basically our information that we are saving to the database. All right, so with those changes in mind, Let's go back to this new line where it says users and pass, or you can, whatever yours is named. And it's this XC data model. All right, here's where we're going to create our entity. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click the add entity button. I'm going to double click the word entity up here and I'm just going to call it users. Okay. Now our users entity or table or database is going to have a couple of attributes. I want to save some information. What do I want to save? Well, one thing I want to save is the person's username. And I also want to save his password. So those are two attributes. Let's go ahead and begin by adding them here, clicking on the plus, plus button. The first one, I'm just going to call it, I'm going to call it usernames just to be consistent. And that is going to be of type string. The second attribute, I'm going to call passwords, and this is going to hold our information for their passwords. That is also of type string. All right, that is it in creating our entity. Now let's get back into the storyboard. And I'm going to swap this out for the 4.7 inch. I'm going to grab a couple of text fields for our app. There we go. There's one. And two, I'm also going to add a button and get that up there. I'm going to change the text from the button to say save info. That looks good. I'm going to extend these text fields out. There we go. There we go. And I'm actually also going to put some constraints on them. I click on it. I'm going to control click and drag to the view. I'm going to say the vertical spacing to the top layout guide. So it's always going to have this spacing no matter what size screen we're working on. I'm also going to control click and drag toward the left of the text field. And that's going to make sure the leading space is the same no matter where they are. And I'm going to control click and drag to the right side of the view and make sure the trailing space is the same. I'm going to do the same thing with the second one. I'm going to control Click and drag up to the second one. Make sure it is vertical spacing remains the same between these two, regardless of our screen size or device that we're on. Control, click and drag to the left side. It makes our leading space the same. And to the right side makes our trailing space the same. So regardless of how big our screen gets, we're always going to have the same size gap on either side. And these two will always be this far apart. Now for our button, I'm going to do the same thing. Control, click and drag up to the item just above it. Make sure that vertical spacing is set. And for this one, I just want to make sure it's centered to the view. So I'm just going to control click it and say center horizontally in container. Okay, there we go. Now we're all nice and neat. Now getting back to our text fields, I want to do a placeholder text that's just going to say user name to help prompt the user. And down here, I'm just going to say password. Okay, that's good. Now let's make some connections. I'm going to close out the right hand pane, open up our assistant editor. I'm going to control click and drag from the first text field. And I'm just going to call this name field. It's a UI text field. It is an outlet hit connect. The next one is control click and drag. And this one I'm just going to call pass field. 
kind of combination of the two words. Okay, well, that one went down there. That's fine. So the last thing I need to do is this button. I'm going to control, click, and drag that. And this button is going to be an action. And we're going to call it save. Let's see this. Save info. And it's of type UI button. And hit connect. All right, we are good to go. Now let's start coding. I'm going to close out the assistant editor and get over to our viewcontroller.swift. So let's get into our save info button function. And the first thing we're going to do, there's a couple of things we need to always reference when using core data. And the first one is the app delegate. Um, and then we also have to reference the context, which is part of the information that is in our entity. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. So let app del, which is of type app delegate. And that's going to be equal to a UI application dot shared application dot delegate as exclamation point app delegate. Okay, that's the first line you need. Now we need to reference the context or the info. So the context is going to be equal to which I'm sorry, which is a type and s manage managed object context. And that's going to be equal to app del. So we're referencing the app delegate up above dot managed object context. There we go. All right. So this is re uh, relating to this up here. So this app del dot managed object properties. This app del is referencing this constant up here, which is of type app delegate. And it's referencing some of the information that is in our delegate that we need to uh, conform to. Okay, so I'm wondering why I have a little bit of an error here. And I know exactly why this is screaming at me. And it's really good that I left it in there because we need to import the core data framework. There we go. That should take care of it. Now it knows what an NS managed object context is. Okay, so we set up reference to our database and things like that. And now we're going to start. Let me start. I'm going to start commenting some things. We're going to say add new user. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a constant called new user and that's going to be equal to an NS entity description dot insert new object for entity for name and the entity name is we call the users in manage object context. Well, we're going to refer to our constant that we called context up here. Okay, so we're adding a new user. And it's um, for our entity called users, and it's re referencing that context within that entity. Okay, so now we can say new user dot set value. And what value we're going to do? Well, we want whatever's in the name field. So we're going to say name field dot text. So we're going to set that value for the key in our thing, and we called it, what do we call it? User names, I think. Just to make sure, because I have made this mistake before and I called it something else. If you forget, just go back over to your XC data model. And we did. We called it usernames with the, with the plural. Okay. Just want to make sure because it will throw an error. Okay. Perfect. Now we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to say new user dot set value. Well, what are we setting? Well, this time we need the information that was typed into the past text field. So we need that text. And that is for the string called passwords. So we've talked about values and keys before when our discussion in dictionaries. And this is exactly what this entity is. It's a dictionary. So we have the value for here is going to be in the key usernames. All right, let's continue on. Now let's, let's add the info to the entity. Okay, so in order to do that, we're going to need a do try catch phrase. So we say do, because we may have an error where there might not be anything in this. So we're going to say do and say try. And what we need to do is say context dot save. So do try to save this to the context dot save. If not, catch an error. And what are we going to do in case there's an error? Well, I think what we'll just do is just say print. Let's see. We'll it. There was an error saving data. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we have a do, try, catch, and it'd be helpful if I spelled the word print correctly. There we go. All right, so that handles this. And I just want to comment on these last braces because I always end up deleting one. End of app, and this is end 
end of button funk. Okay, perfect, because that will mess me up. <laughs> All right, there we go. So we've got, we've accessed the entity. We've created a new user for an entity called users. And we've taken the value from our text fields up here. There's one, there's two, and set them to the keys. Okay, one for username and one for password. Now we are saving that info to our context by using a do try catchphrase. Now it's time to retrieve the data. And we're gonna do this within another do try catch. So let me just set that up because I think it's almost easier for me if I do this. Get all the curly braces in at once. There we go. Okay, so now what are we going to do? Well, let's set up what we're going to do, what we hope to accomplish. And if we're, there's an error, we're just going to, you know what? I'm going to do this right now. Command C, Command V. Okay, now we don't have to worry about this. And now we can build the rest of our code in here. We're going to now retrieve the data. So we're going to say, let request be equal to an NS fetch, let's see, fetch request, open parentheses, and we want entity name, which is a string, and our entity we called users. So we're asking to fetch something from our entity called users. So that's our fetch request. Now I'm also going to say let results, that means everything that's been returned is going to equal to try from our context dot execute that fetch request that we called request right up above it. Okay, let me go through that again. We're asking for a request, which is an NS fetch request from our entity called users. Everything that comes back from that request that has been executed is going to be set to results. All right, now we're going to go through an if statement, if else statement. For um, basically what we want to say, if the results, if there's something in there, if we've added something in there, then we want to print the stuff out. If there's, otherwise we don't want to do it because there's no reason to retrieve the data because there won't be any data. So let me just type that out and hopefully become more uh, familiar to it. So we'll say results, oops, results dot count. Now results, remember our entity is a dictionary and much like arrays, there's going to be a count property. So we're going to have the number. So if that count is greater than zero, we're going to execute this bit of code. Well, what do we want to do? Well, let's print out the information. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our for in loop. So for items in results, and I'll go through this as I do it as, and what are they? They are an array of dictionary items, or sorry, they're a collection of items in the dictionary of our um, NS managed objects, which are NS managed objects we not object context but the whole product okay so for items in results we are going to perform this bit of code in here we're still all within this if statement within this whole big do statement up here all right so if you prefer i'm just gonna say and if statement that might help it a little bit and i will indent this there we go okay so what are we going to do for things well I'm going to create a couple of variables or constants. I'm going to say let name, and that's going to be equal to item dot value for key. And what do we want? Is that is in uh, what do we call it? User names. And another one is going to be let password be equal to item. Hang on a minute, I just want to take, not call, I want to call that item. For item in results, there we go. So item dot value for key, and we want this one to be our passwords. So let me go through this. We're setting a constant called name, and that is for anything that's in our usernames uh, field or column, if you will. So if you think of each entity, maybe there's a column of usernames and a column of passwords or what have you. And the other one is going to say item value for key at passwords. Now, all I want to do is I now want to just print this out. So I'm going to say print. And what do I want to print? I want to print name. And I explicitly know it will be there and password. And I'm going to explicitly demand that it gets unwrapped. Okay, so that looks good. And let's go through this again. We are retrieving the data. We're using this do try catch 
statement over here because if we don't, there could be an error, all right? This may not, we might have misspelled something or whatever. So we're just handling the errors. We need to do this in Swift too. So if there is an error, we catch it with this print statement down here. So here's where all the magic happens. Here's what happens if the magic doesn't exist. So let's go ahead and run this. Let's see if we can't get this working. All right, so let's try this out. I'm going to say Tom, and Tom's password is going to be 1234. Save info, and there we have Tom 1234. Oh, you know what I want to do? Hmm, I forgot to clear the text fields, but we can go back and do that in a minute. So let me just pretend that I cleared the text fields, and let's say, let's do uh, Steve, and Steve password is going to be 0987, and save info, and we've got Tom, and then Steve. Okay, so we can keep adding to this. All right, so let's go back now that we know it's working. I'm going to go back here and let's see while we're still in our end of button function, I'm just going to say, let me see, let's see, name field dot text is going to be equal to a blank string and pass field dot text is also going to be equal to a blank string string once we hit that save button. Okay, so now let's run it again. Here we are. Let's try Mike. And Mike's password is going to be a lot of letters. And we're going to save the info. And then we've got Tom, Steve, and Mike. So this data is persisting thanks to our core data. All right, let's start building out a little bit more useful apps.